All right, so riding around. Uh, Kirsch decided to show. Hey, okay, group. And the top in a pose. Group ride, mob ride type of okay. thing. Reverse. This Harley rider is is trying to do some wheelies. Residential neighborhood. Lots of different hazards left and right. There's a side of the vehicle coming up. All right, so we're gonna do that. Oh, we're crossing into traffic. Make sure you land it and you're able to handle it. There's a car coming. Oh. Yeah, this is what I don't like. Like, if you're gonna stunt, do it. Do it in a closed area. That guy was having a... You guys see that, right? You guys, you guys saw that, right? You guys saw that, right? All right, so let's just take a quick look at this. Before we start, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a lot of things that came out of the Smart Rider Basic Training eBook. Make sure you grab it. Link will be in the description for a discount. It's the cheapest it'll ever be, so make sure you grab it now. Okay, this is Sun City uh, Bike Life. I mean, there's a bunch of different names. Chuko, Sun City Bike Life. Uh, something industries. All right, so Sun City, Arizona. This is this is like in Phoenix, Arizona. All right, so when you're gonna go stunting, the one thing I really wanted to to really put out there is you go ahead and do stunting. You go ahead and do that. If you get hurt, then make sure you guys know how to take care of each other. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, but when we talk about anything bike related, it's gonna be a risk assessment. If we're gonna be riding around in neighborhoods like this or in a downtown area like this where you have a bunch of different traffic going back and forth, you got sides of the vehicles right here, big group ride, there's just too many different hazards involved. Uh, I don't understand it myself why we need to be doing all the stunting when we could just ride around with some friends using our cardinal pack talk bolts, just chit chatting. But, uh, anyways, whatever, you're gonna do your thing, you're gonna have some fun. Uh, the problem is, uh, we're not reducing the risks. Like I said, side of the vehicles. You got oncoming traffic, not a lot of space cushions, too many people around. So right here, he's going into oncoming traffic because he's not controlling the bike as well. So with risk assessment, it also involves your skill. So if you have a ton of skill, you can lower your risk. Okay, If you have low skill and you're hauling ass around corners, you have a good chance of you know, low siding or high siding or crashing. Kind of the same thing here. If you're riding around doing some craziness and you're low skill when it comes to what you're doing or you have a screw up and there's just too many different factors, you have a good chance of, of getting into, uh, into trouble. So he just lands it right here. We got co vehicles coming. So what do we do? We're not getting back into our lane. We're just gonna be like, oh crap, we gotta find that escape route, which is gonna be that oncoming traffic area moving off to the side. So right here, we're putting ourselves in danger. We're putting others in danger, a big Harley like this, a bike, any bike three to six hundred pounds easily uh these bikes right here but that harley a lot more a lot more we're talking 700 plus uh going straight into a vehicle with possible kids you know people that weren't even anticipating somebody doing this all because we wanted to look good during our group ride so to me it's not worth it um it's not a good risk assessment it's not a good time to do things everyone is like looking around this guy's looking around it's like did you guys see that that was kind of weird that was kind of dumb that was kind of cool whatever the response is for me it's i'm just glad he didn't hit anybody head on and i'm over here having to to rescue him with my my trauma kit and take care of this dumb dumb as simple as that all right look at the guy behind all right we're looking we're looking slow r1 rider He's kind of on your butt, kind of on your butt, not a big deal. He's, he's not, whoa, 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 oh, that was a high side. Why do you think he high sided? Uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Gravel, Heavy Harris? What do you think? So we're riding around here, it's a group ride. We're kind of staggered, this guy's a little bit close, not a big deal. Uh, the person's a little bit off that way. Now on these uh, turns, you want to give yourself enough space cushion and enough of a line of sight thing. So you want to pick your own lane, Ride your own ride. Don't get super close. If you're chit-chatting on your Cardo Pack Talks, that's a great, uh, a great time. Uh, but why do you think this Harley guy, he's already started squid, or not squid now, he started fishtailing out right here. So, why, oh, I got to get my pen out. Somebody, rookies, can you grab my pen? Oh, thank you. Got it. Perfect. All right. So why is he already going a little, woo, with that rear tire? Talon, loss of traction, gain of traction. Yeah, so that's the high side. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, maybe going a little too fast on the turn, what's one of the things that we panic? We slam that front, or you slam that right foot, just like you're in a car. You're on the gas pedal with that right foot. Oh, crap, you move your right foot over to the brake pedal, slam it, right, in a car. Uh, pretty much the same things happen here on a motorcycle. So if you're coming from a car driving typically straight to motorcycling, your right foot is pretty heavy. So we've got to train our body to utilize that front hand and utilize our hands for the primary controls so that we can go into these turns 
a little bit slower, so we're not doing stuff like this. But yeah, he went a little bit fast, possibly. So he's gonna start, he's gonna start fishtailing, start fishtailing, and that's where that rear tire lost traction. It's gonna low side, but then it gains traction last second, and then it flips over, and that's really dangerous because it's gonna launch you at pretty much full speeds, full speeds, and then it's gonna hit. Okay, so there's the shoulder, and then he's gonna slide off uh, into the dirt. Now, thankfully. He was going this way on this side of the road. But imagine if he was that white or that car right there and he fell over and started sliding into oncoming traffic. Okay. So uh, a no bueno uh, situation. He's rolling around. Uh, hopefully, you guys can all rescue each other. Looks like he's got this guy right here. <laughs> he's got an Elmo, Elmo helmet cover. <laughs> you guys are fun. All right. Yep. Go ahead and pull around and help him out. Oh, oh, oh. It's filmed with a potato? Prius gave this biker a hint that something is wrong and that it will be a good to keep a bit further behind. Oh, oh, oh. We got three people down. I heard some skidding, so we got some locking up with the brakes. So this is on the middle of a turn. I have a feeling somebody like stopped or crashed and then everyone just started crashing. You all right? Take it easy. Oh. <laughs> His hands hurt a little bit. Like everyone in regular jeans. If you guys want to wear jeans, they do have motorcycle specific jeans. <coughs> they do have motorcycle specific jeans, guys. Very good. So the one that's not in the incident is able to think clearly. Yeah, get out of the corner. Get out of the corner. Put the bikes. There you go. There you go. Put the bikes in a, in a position to where you're not going to get hit. So what I was saying is the person that wasn't in the incident is able to think clearly. It's like these people aren't really thinking. They're like, okay, I just got to get the bike up. I just crashed. He's going to get the side stand down. Okay, so if you're not inside the incident, you're going to be the one thinking more clearly. What that means to you is that you need to remain calm. You have to remain calm whenever somebody crashes. Because if you're amped up, you're not going to think clearly. You're not going to go back to your training. And your training, at least in this situation, is knowing how to put the side stand down and move the bike. I want your training to expand. I want you to have some skills when it comes to rescuing another rider. I want you to have some skills when it comes to teaching and mentoring, you know, the whole smart rider principles. So I want you to expand your skill base, not necessarily getting better at riding. I want you to get way good at riding, maintain your fundamental skills. But instead of climbing that ladder of only motorcycle skills, I want you to kind of expand uh, outwards. And you're able to seek out and recognize hazard situations. There's your fundamental skills. But then knowing what kind of gear to get, knowing how to rescue another rider, and then teaching and mentoring all those things that you learned to somebody else. So I like to expand outwards, not keep climbing things. I don't want to specialize in stuff. I want to I help out as many people as possible uh, at the base level as possible. So when we, uh, these people crash in the middle of a corner like this, my biggest fear is going to be any traffic coming this way and then around this corner because you have to orient yourself to this whole situation is we're on a blind corner, people going around corners, not paying attention. Look, we got some skid marks here, so we're probably we're slipping and sliding, going maybe a little too fast, right? So if we were going too fast, maybe they're going to go too fast. We have to get out of the roadway, ensure your own safety. Remain calm, ensure your own safety, stop the bleeding, quickly assess the severity. That's rescue another rider. It's over here. It's right there, R-E-S-Q. You can read it off the wall if you want, all right? Make sure you guys take a nice seat, relax a little bit. We're in the middle of class. Uh, but learn how to rescue another rider when it comes to this, and this is what this rider's doing. Start seeing all these things. People are walking wounded, very good. We got to get out of the roadway. Get out of the roadway, very good. We're remaining calm. He's not rushing, very good. I'm concerned about anybody coming around this corner, so I'd be helping my buddies get their stuff out of the way. Everyone's on the ground. It's okay, Harvey. Yeah, let's move with a purpose. Get out of the road. Get out of the road. Move with a purpose. Get onto the dirt. We could check this later. Move, 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 move. I'm glad he keeps checking, but we got to get it out of the roadway. Looks like everybody's walking wounded. Nobody's really hurt. It's just probably egos. The last thing I want is you guys to get hurt again because a car is coming around this corner, okay? All right, so right here, riding around. Not going too fast, you know, 50, 60, you know? 
a simple road. We've got full gear. Okay. Oh, somebody just crashed right here. So somebody just very sharp turn, went a little bit wide. What do you think happened there, everybody? This is where we start to learn to rescue another rider. Hopefully this rider had full gear, right? 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 Looks like full gear. Good job. Watch, watch the, the hot parts. Relax. <laughs> I know I did that too, a little bumpy. It was like, kick me up. So we're gonna check you out a little bit. Cause you clean. Very good. <laughs> check them out. Don't just start riding again. It was, we're not racing. Been, see. Got more tail lights, which is who cares? Yeah. Let's just get you on the pavement. Very good. Move that hand. Don't 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 help out with the the hands on the tires. You want to get wrapped up. All right. So let's just talk briefly about what happened here. So we're riding in a group ride setting. Okay. So watch this little screen right here. The big screen is what's happening. But this little guy right here is going to be the one that crashes. So he's gonna look, he's gonna go a little bit too wide and crash. Now for us, we need to make sure we don't crash. Okay. Remember, it's their emergency. Hey, crashed up. Oh. That's the reality. Let's make sure we don't crash either so we can help these people. If we crash, now there's two patients, two victims. So try our best not to follow that, okay? So he's doing a good job. He's going to pull off. To, oh, here we go. We go. See this again? He's going to crash. Okay. Typical cornering crash right at the end because we went a little bit too wide, a little bit too fast. Group ride, maybe trying to keep up. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do a good job stopping. Very good. So this is the face cam now. So. Walking wounded, looking good, full gear, okay, very good. We did knock that down. That takes a lot to snap one of those things, so we hit this pretty hard. Now, here's the thing that I really want to point out, is that let's not rush to get back on the bike and get going. Okay, let's take a, hey, we crashed. Let's give ourselves at least five to ten minutes. Let's look over the bike, let's look over the body. Can it ride? Can you ride? And then let's go. And if not, we'll get something out here to help out. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. So he says he's good. Okay, good airway and everything. So it seems like the rider's doing fine. Last thing we want is for us to get back on the bike and start riding, trying to keep up, and all of a sudden damage to the bike causes us to crash again. <laughs> I know I did that too, a little bumpy. It was like, kick me up. So we're going to check you out a little bit. Very good. Very good for the rider to say we're going to check you out. <laughs> yeah, we the oil so he's checking for fluids, making sure there's no oil, it was not leaking. Dripping. See? Not really going to tell until you get on the pavement, that's what he says. Got more tail lights, which is who cares? Let's just get you on the pavement. Now, so right here, I wouldn't do that with my hands, because you can easily get it caught up in there. I wouldn't do that. Uh, looks like it says Dan right there. That's pretty cool. Um, so he was doing a quick 360 assessment of the bike. Um, I'll do the same thing, but just go ahead and sit down a little bit. Let's get our adrenaline down a little bit before we start. Did a good job though. So low side crashed because it's corner too much speed. What do you think? Here we go. We're riding around slow R1 rider again. All right. The shadows can mess up your vision a little bit. Oh, somebody crashed on a corner. Just kind of sitting there. See, this is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very good. We're gonna pull off the. We're gonna pull off the road. Exactly what I'm talking about. Stalled a little bit. Not a big deal. <laughs> He's not using a rock for mount. Come on, man. You okay? But you can't lift the bike up. Just trying to make a U-turn. Okay. We have to know how to pick up the bike, everybody. We do have that video on motorcycle training concepts uh, .com and the YouTube channel. Push over there. Motorcycle Training Concepts YouTube channel. Please check it out. Links in the description for the YouTube channel. Uh, two different ways of lifting the bike. We talk about it in the book and we talk about it on the in the video. Um, you can easily do it yourself, even if you're a small framed person. My wife can pick up uh, the bike very easily. Now, when it comes to U-turns, let's take a look at the whole situation. Okay, we're coming around here. I think what she was trying to do is get into the area everyone else was going into. And didn't do enough counterbalancing. Like she's just kind of waiting there. It's like, oh, crap, can somebody help me out? I know I got a group ride right here. Can somebody help me out? Last thing you want to do is rely on other people when it comes to this stuff. 
Uh, you don't know if any vehicles are coming. You could be damaging your bike. Uh, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's very scary. Um, but you need to learn how to, to, to lift your own bike. Okay. So probably try to do what this guy's doing right now. You turn right. Now it's really hard to do in like a little cambered situation like this. So this is why you got to practice in a parking lot. When you do it on something like this, you're going to have to give it a little bit more counterbalance. You have to give it a little bit better uh, rear brake, you know, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. This is where practicing comes in. We talk about that on the YouTube channel, Motorcycle Training Concepts. Please check it out. We do some U-turn practice. Do, we do a whole bunch of stuff on the sport bike and on my Indian FTR and a big cruiser bike. So check it out on that channel. Um, but definitely you need to practice this because last thing you want to do is be doing a U-turn and a car is coming and then you get hit. And you also want to learn how to lift it. Thankfully, uh, slow R1 rider's here. So here's that U-turn that she was probably trying to do. A little stalling. Not using a rock form mount. I get it. It's okay. But if you want 25% off, use the link in the description for a rock form mount. You okay? Need some assistance. Not a big deal. She's okay. Very good. Yeah, learn how to pick it up. Stop the, the, stop the bike. Stop the other bike. Hey, hey bro. Can you hold me? Because I can't do that much. <laughs> All right, let's okay. go there. It doesn't take three people, but you're good. Now we're leaking fluid. That's more than likely just the gas uh, coming out of the this, the uh, overfill. Um, so once you get it off to the side, then you check it, make sure everything's okay. But that, that's typical. It's it's like an overfill mechanism. Um, it just started leaking out because it's on its side. Yeah. Let's push it. <laughs> stoplight um your foot slips i talked about this about putting your foot down at, at the lights and everything let's say your foot slips and your bike falls over so let's turn the bike on so i'm on the bike and i'm like oh yeah come to the stop right here foot slips this is what happens guys so i put my kickstand back up because i wouldn't i wasn't riding without a kickstand let's go ahead and do it oh no Oh no, my bike fell, okay? So my bike's gonna automatically shut off. Now, at this point, I'm pretty, I'm pretty embarrassed. I'm pretty embarrassed that my, I dropped my bike. So, but real quick, what I need to do is I need to shut off. I just turned the keys to the, to the bike off. I just turned it all off, okay? I know some of you guys are cringing right now. So what do you do is, what do you do with this is, uh, well, basically, you don't wanna lift it up if you have a bad back, okay? First of all, you're gonna hurt yourself. An ambulance ride costs more than uh, getting rider's assistance, you know, getting, getting uh, car assistance. So, but if you're gonna lift it up, this is what you do. So you're gonna go ahead and make sure your kickstand is down, especially, all right. oh, I'm doing good, I'm doing a little video here. All good, thank you so much, man. Take care, man. You take care. Always nice to have people. So if you fell onto this side, okay, if your bike fell onto this side and you have the kickstand um, on this side, you obviously wanna have the kickstand up. Now, if it fell on this side, you're not gonna be able to reach the kickstand, okay? Another thing is, since it fell on this side, I have access to my gears. I have access to my, my shifter right here and my clutch. So what you want to do is you want to put it in first gear. So if you're at the light for some reason and you're in, in uh, neutral, there you go. Put it in first gear. It might be a little hard to do that if it was on the other side, but it can be done. So now at this point, uh, this is the easy way. This is the way that you've probably seen on YouTube videos all the time is to get low. Let's go ahead and get my pants up. There we go. Let's go ahead and get low. So I'll just go ahead and grab the handle. I can see my crack in the back. Um, you're gonna get nice and low. And I've seen some people say, get on top of the bike. I've seen some people get low. Now when I used to deadlift, there we go. so I used to deadlift really heavy weight. I used to you know, do it nice and easy. The thing is you gotta get leverage. Leverage right here is gonna be a lot easier because you have the bike. And as soon as the tires touch, you can start pushing against the leverage of the bike. You're not lifting it straight up. Okay guys, you're not lifting it straight up. You're lifting it up at an angle. Think of it as like a tire flip, but you're gonna, you're gonna hold it backwards. That's another thing that you can do. So if you wanna practice, go get one of those tires from those big tractor tires at like CrossFit, try to lift it up backwards. Okay, but this is gonna be a lot easier because it's, it's different. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, we're gonna grab the handle, okay? Let me see my butt crack. We're not gonna show this camera over here. So we're gonna grab the handle and we're just gonna get something where we get a good grip, okay? You don't really need your right hand on anything. You just need to get um, the, the handle and you're able to start lifting up. And you wanna use your legs and kinda squat into it, okay? So what we're gonna do is this, grab it. 
You don't need to use the right hand. So you're gonna get it up and just start taking baby steps, okay? Now I got a balance point right here to where it's like, okay, I, I feel good. So if, we're, if we fell on the other side, if the bike fell on the other side, at this point, I'm gonna just kinda sit here. I can, I can just sit here, it's fine. I'd put the kickstand down. And if I can't get it, you know, I'll just try to get, you know, to where I can, kickstand down, move everything around. Cool. All right. Now, since I lifted it up from this side and I put the kickstand down on the other side already, all I have to do is just this. That's it. Now, you're at a stoplight, you're, you're, you're a little nervous and you want to, you know, you're scared to, you know, to try it like that. You know, I'd rather just get it up and get it off the ground. Go ahead. You can go ahead and do that. That's perfectly fine. So the best way to pick your bike up from here without having to do that, okay? Without having, that's easy, that was easy as, as pie, okay? Nice short choppy steps walking it up. This is where you can hurt your back, okay? If you're gonna do it this way, what you wanna do is you wanna, like normally everyone's like, oh, it's just a bicycle, lift it up. So if you start doing that, okay, I got it there. Now what you need to do is turn the wheel the opposite direction to get the most leverage. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So if you have the wheel like this, and you try to lift it up, you're not gonna get the, the best leverage, but you're gonna get the best leverage. Let's go ahead and put it back down. So you want the wheel up like this away, or towards where you're lifting, okay? So towards where you're lifting, grab it by the handles. Now this is where it's bad for your back because you're leaning at a different way, putting more stress on each uh, different leg. But if you wanna do it quick, this is one way to do it quick. Grab, grab, turn the tire, lift with your legs. So you get to a point where uh, it's going to almost self-balance, and then you're going to just walk it up. Hit the brakes. Now, at this point, you should have already had the kickstand down, because you do not want to get on the bike, slip and fall again, because that would suck. So what you want to do is you have the kickstand up before you start lifting again. Guys, also remember, once you get it up and you get it on its side stand, remember you had it in gear, and the bike automatically shut off, okay? So what you're going to have to do, I got some trouble codes. I'm in gear. I'm gonna put it in neutral. I, I reset the kill switch, the run switch and everything. So I still have it in gear. Starts right back up. Put it in neutral. There we are. It's gonna be fine, guys. Awesome. That's it. Hopefully it doesn't sound all messed up because of the mic. I'm out of breath, it's hot. I wanted to do it with gear. I didn't want to do it with the helmet because it's just too hot, but that's how you do it. I'm exhausted because I'm fat. <laughs> if you like today's video, make sure you click this video right here to keep watching more. But if you want to become a smart rider, click this and grab this smart rider basic training ebook. It's going to help you become a smart rider by planning your ride, rescuing other riders, knowing what patterns to look for, and so much more. Make sure you grab it. Link will be in the description also. I'll be seeing you around.